Hello heroes, I'm 4K, and today we're taking a look at Spider-Man Far From Home, specifically the villain Mysterio, and we're going to compare his costume design to the original Steve Ditko design. How close does it come? Where did they depart? For starters, let's take a look at the one most notable departure from the original design, that ornate gold breastplate. Of course, in the original design, there was no breastplate, it was just his bodysuit. But it looks like a functional addition if he's more of a combat-related character. Having a little bit stronger uh, defensive armament seems to make sense. Let's take a closer look at the breastplate. I do have to say, I prefer the Ditko design without the breastplate. There's something about that green and black gridded bodysuit that just seems to have a, a clean, powerful design. I, it's something that has been in almost every artistic rendition of the character. It's often dropped for cartoons because of the extra line work that it would add, but there's just something that's classic about it. I know it seems like a very minor thing, and some people are like, why are you so bent out of shape when it's something that gets dropped in an adaptation? But I'm glad that they at least kept the bodysuit, even though it's obscured by the breastplate. Because if you look at the rest of the bodysuit, it definitely has that grid pattern. And it just, it just seems so authentic to Ditko's design. And the next signature element of his design is that purple cape held in place by two eye cloak pins. And if those eye shapes look familiar to you, they should. It's a direct reference to the Eye of Providence, a symbol in Christian iconography representing God's omniscient, all-seeing gaze upon you, no matter where you're at. This icon has shown up in many designs over history, including in your wallet right now. And I'm so glad to see that they kept the Eye of Providence and even added to it a little bit. If you look closely at the costume, you can see it repeating itself in many places. You can see little eye icons on his arm. You can see flares of them when he's using his power. And also, you can see rows of them on his breastplate. I theorized in a previous video that that actually is a connection to the Spider-Man cartoon Mysterio from the 1990s, a change that they made to the costume that was a functional element that it seems that the movie has adopted as well. You can check that video out at the link up in the corner or at the end of this video. Now let's move on to the gauntlets. This is a very uh, little talked about and fairly unsung element of his character design, but I think it's one of Ditko's coolest elements. For starters, they've got cubic cuffs. That is something that you just don't see. And look closely at each of the sides of the gauntlet. That little design pattern, it seems so intricate for such a small part of the costume. And it just seems that Ditko was kind of anticipating his more psychedelic design work in the uh, Doctor Strange issues that would come later. And this is one of the elements that I thought is so small, or at least a lot of people would see it that way, that a lot of artists that followed Ditko would drop it or adapt it or simplify it at least for a little bit less work for them. And yet that part of the design is something that is very commonly done from artists that have followed Ditko in the 70s up to today. Now let's go back to the shape of the gauntlets, that cubic shape. I said before it was one of the most distinctive in genre fiction, and I believe that. As I was thinking about it, I just, I just loved that shape, and suddenly it occurred to me, I don't think I've ever seen that before. I racked my brain to think of any movie or comic book or TV show that had a character with cubic gauntlets like that. I even reached out to a friend of mine who forges armor for uh, exhibitions and battle reenactments, and I asked him, have you ever seen anything like that in, in your uh, uh, armor forging days? And, and Or even just, like I said, on TV or movie or any fantasy fiction that you've ever seen, and he couldn't think of anything. Now, there may be something out there, and if you're aware of it, please let me know in the comments below. I'd, I'd like to know, but even if there is, uh, obviously this is uh, one of the most unique designs to one of the most common bits of armor that, that there are out there. Uh, and I just think that that shows how cutting-edge Steve Ditko is. Even after all these years since that character came out, I still have not seen another pair of And I think there are a few reasons why this is such a unique design and why it's not done elsewhere or even in real armor. 
For one thing, your arm is more rounded, so it doesn't fit the shape of your arm. Uh, secondly, uh, we know from uh, engineering that a round shape can give you added strength, that a square shape is uh, less strong as a structure. That's why they make soda cans round instead of square. So it makes functional sense that it wouldn't be used. You can see why that might be something they want to change for the production uh, for functionality it might be just more comfortable or easy to attach uh, uh, to do uh, the, the the rounded gauntlet though they still in the movie tried to reference that you can see clear four edges that kind of uh, uh, give it those angular corners even though the the gauntlet itself is kind of uh, rounded in there um, the other element of the gauntlet are the curved hooks at the end of the gauntlet and uh, this I'm not surprised that they got rid of because I think that would be a functional element. I think that uh, any time uh, Jake Gyllenhaal went like this, he'd be catching that those hooks on the rest of his costume and such. So I'm not surprised that they ditched that. Now, of course, that brings us to Mysterio's number one signature visual element, the fishbowl dome head. Now, I can't tell you how many times on the internet I've seen people cracking wise about the fishbowl head. They seem to think that that is a design weakness of the character, and I think that couldn't be farther from the truth. It's such a unique design. Obviously, we've had characters that have had domed helmets before, such as Mr. Freeze, but no one's really done it like Ditko. Since it looks like it's supposed to be made of glass, you should be able to see his face through it, but you can't. It kind of implies the person under the suit may not even have a head, giving off a kind of unsettling, inhuman feel. It's just a perfect fit for Mysterio's powers of illusion. I can't tell you how many people I've seen cracking wise about this on the internet, thinking that the fishbowl helmet looks stupid and is lame, and of course, it comes down to opinion. It's subjective. Your mileage may vary, but I just think that they're so wrong. I think it's such a, a cool and interesting look, and and I know a lot of people were arguing before the design was shown uh, for the movie that it was too cheesy, too unrealistic to fit into the MCU. And so I'm really glad to see that, yes, they did bring in the classic fishbowl helmet into the Mysterio design for Far From Home. Regardless, tell me what you think. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. See you here next time on Hero Journalism. <laughs>